Hello, hello. My name is Nicole Thomas, and if you are a Ceramics 1 student or an adult that's new to pottery, this video is for you. I wanted to film from an angle that was up close and personal for all those visual learners who really want to get in there and see what's going on. So let's get right into it. The first thing I'm going to do is make one little wet X on the center of my wheel head, and then I'm going to take my two pound ball of clay and whack it on the wheel head just like this. I'm gonna go ahead and seal that clay using just my fingertip, and then I'm gonna think about how I'm gonna place my elbows, either pinning them into the side of my rib cage or resting them on my thighs. I wanna make sure that my elbows are tight and centered on my body and not moving out like this or like that. I definitely don't wanna see elbows flying around. I wanna see them tight and attached to your body, using them to create energy that you're going to push into your clay. Now, speaking of the clay, I'm gonna use this ridge on my left hand and my fingertips across the top to touch the outside of my clay right here. And then I'm gonna use the ridge of my right hand and my fingertips here to hug my thumb and push down on the top. So let's put it all together and show you what that looks like. I like to get my clay a little wet and then I come in starting by pushing down a little bit harder on the top and you're gonna see that clay pancake out a little bit. Then I'm gonna come back and push a little bit harder on the side, getting that clay to come in and be a little bit taller. And then I'm going to hop back and forth between these movements, pushing down and then coming in and pushing on the side while I flex my abs and my biceps and force this clay into being completely centered. So my real power move here is at some point I decide to really lock my left hand into place right here and once I lock the left hand into place, I'm also gonna push down with more pressure on the top, and that's gonna be the movement that's really gonna get this clay to move in a centered rotation. Now this is looking really nice and centered. The next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and open this piece. So a lot of times beginners like to take both thumbs and kind of squish them in just like this. Some folks like to use pointer fingers, but I don't think they provide enough stability. My favorite is a combination of the two. I take a thumb and a pointer finger, I get a little bit of water, and I push about three-fourths or 75% of the way down into the clay, and then I gently pull across towards my belly button, trying not to create really deep ridges because you want this floor to be smooth and even. So a little pro tip, if you are to take your needle tool and you push it all the way down and then slide your pointer finger to the top and pull it out, you'll see that the floor of your piece is about that thick. So that looks like it's an inch thick, which is a little bit too thick, but that's okay. So we're gonna come in with our yellow potter sponge. We're gonna fold it in half and we're gonna come down and start compressing the floor of the pot. And I should have started with this in the beginning, <clears throat> but your pottery wheel very likely has a foot pedal and the foot pedal controls the speed of your wheel. You never need to be moving faster than a slow, medium speed, especially if you're just getting started. So that potter sponge did a really nice job of smoothing. We're gonna come in with our wooden rib and one more time we're gonna repeat that motion, compressing the bottom of our piece this is gonna help to avoid S cracks and make a really strong and smooth base. So now that we've opened the floor of the pot and we've compressed it, we are ready to come in. I'm gonna pinch and pull up just like this, getting a pointer finger and a middle finger on the inside right here, and getting a pointer finger and a middle finger on the yellow potter sponge on the outside. I'm going to pinch in a little bit, catching this weight that we see here, and then smoothly pinching and pulling up. It feels really natural to pull out and create a wider form, but do your best to pull straight up. Sometimes you'll get some extra clay that comes off on your sponge and that's okay. Something you wanna think about is trying to get the majority of the height of your piece within the first three pulls. So let's come back for that second pull, same thing. I have a pointer finger and a middle finger on the outside of this yellow sponge. On the inside, I'm going to pinch in and pull up just like that. Being mindful of some of the weight that I feel in the bottom of my piece, 
piece, I pinch in and pull up, making sure to use less pressure where the wall feels thinner and a little bit more pressure where the wall feels thicker. Getting a piece of clay centered and pulling it up into a cylinder is one of the first things you're going to want to do when you start working on the pottery wheel. Once you learn how to make a cylinder, all your other forms are going to be much easier to create. I've got a little wiggle in my cylinder right here, but we're going to come back in for that third and final pull. One last thing I can do is I can come in and compress that lip a little bit. And then I'm going to think about coming in and taking some of the weight out of the bottom of the piece. So using this wooden modeling tool, I'm going to come in and just cut away some of that weight. I could also come in with a needle tool and cut underneath. This ring of extra clay will be so much easier to take off once I cut under it with the needle tool. And then you can just plop it over in your bucket off to the side. And this wooden modeling rib is going to help me smooth out the side and get this cylinder back to a nice even shape. So I'm planning to come back on day two and trim this piece. So everything I want to do right now is just going to be to help me clean up the piece so I have a little bit less work to do on day two. Before taking this piece off the wheel, I want to make sure that I collect the water on the inside. So just to show you, all that water was in the center of my piece, and that's a big no-no. You don't want to leave puddles sitting inside your pot. You want to make sure that you are taking all of that water out while also leaving the inside of your piece really nice and smooth. Once your inside is nice and dry and you gave your outside a little once over with the potter sponge, you're ready to go ahead and take this piece completely off the wheel. So let's talk about what that looks like. I'm going to stop the speed on the wheel. I'm going to put a little puddle off to the side. I'm going to swivel the splash pan and get my wire tool ready. Dragging the wire tool through the puddle and under the piece, your goal is to get this piece to slide or hydroplane all the way to the edge of the wheel head. Once you know you've wired that piece off, you can get another bat and kind of put a little puddle on it just like this and gently and firmly slide your piece all the way off your wheel head and onto your bat. Some of that was off cam, but you want to slide it onto your bat and then save it for tomorrow when you're going to get ready to trim. If you stopped by today, thank you so much for being here. I hope you love this quick video from Classic Clayworks. And if you have any questions for me, make sure to leave them in the comments below. Thanks so much for being here.